recognize the gentleman from thank Nevada, so Mr. Horsford, for five minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank you and the ranking member. I'm looking forward to working with all of my colleagues <clears throat> again during this 118th Congress. And I know that this is a committee that's known for its bipartisan work. And I think that that uh, should be evident in how we address the threats coming from the Chinese Communist Party. I also want to thank our witnesses uh, for testifying today. Your expertise and insight have been informative as we consider the threat that the Chinese Communist Party plays in our national security. I would be remiss not to mention the events that have transpired. Last week, Americans experienced a symbol of the national security challenge we in this committee have been dealing with for years. The Chinese Communist Party's disregard for the United States sovereignty when a surveillance balloon flew over the U.S. airspace. President Biden and Secretary Austin took decisive action to protect our national interest while also assuring that American lives were not disrupted or harmed. Dr. Sisson, in your September 2022 report on managing the risk of a U.S.-China war, you explained how if the United States is to maintain a constructive role in preventing the outbreak of a cross-strait war, it will need to implement a strategy to deter Chinese aggression that is consistent with U.S. interests and capabilities. Can you expand on what that would look like, please? Certainly. I think we're in good standing with the way our strategy currently does that today. As you know, we have a strategy of dual deterrence across the Taiwan Strait, which makes sure that the PRC doesn't think that it has a free pass and the Taiwan government doesn't think that it has a, a blank check. And we support that by continuing to uh, provide adequate defense capabilities in keeping with the Taiwan Relations Act to the defense forces of Taiwan. We continue to make sure that the United States military is capable, combat credible, ready, well equipped, well positioned to respond in the case of any indications and warnings of a, of a condition, of a contingency. Um, and we continue to support the Taiwan people in other unofficial ways by uh, reducing pressures on them uh, to be isolated from the international community and to support the resilience of the Taiwan people. Um, we need to continue to do all of those things uh, while we address China as a strategic challenge. Um, and I'm confident that we're in a good position to do that. We have an enormous number of national strengths, and we're going to continue to rely on those. Uh, we have the asset of allies and partners who are like-minded in uh, countering PRC coercion. And these are all attributes that we should take full advantage of. Thank you. And just to restate again, what problems do you foresee us needing to solve in order to compete with the Chinese Communist Party militarily? I don't think we have problems to solve, per se. I think we have areas that when opportunities to enhance and to develop and to grow. Um, I think that as the competition continues to have highly technological elements, when we talk about resilience in terms of cyber defenses, when we talk about artificial intelligence and its societal implications, um, those are areas where we're going to need to take a long, hard look at how we develop talent um, and how we attract talent here domestically. And I mean that from everything from you know early childhood education all the way through to visa programs. Um, and so there are, are ways and places in which we can reinforce uh, the way that our system has historically operated to be creative, generative, and highly productive. Thank you. Uh, before I close, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I just want to express that I think it's important for every member of this committee uh, to use responsible language when referring to the People's Republic of China and the Chinese Communist Party. Uh, while there are valid reasons to critique the actions of the Chinese Communist Party, it's important that we do not conflate the actions of a political party and the Chinese people. These anti-China sentiments can lead to an increase in xenophobia and racism towards the broader Asian community, which we saw during then COVID-19 pandemic, when an increase of 339% Asian, anti-Asian hate crime was reported last year compared to the year before. So as we continue our work in this Congress, we as members of the House 
have a duty to use responsible language while also holding the Chinese Communist Party accountable. Gentleman's time has expired. Chair, now